What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video by yours truly. I guess it's high time I talk about my personal experience as well as my teammate uh, in the tournament we participated in, the most recent Honkai Star Rail tournament, which was sponsored by Intel Games. Uh, this tournament was in total a $10,000 tournament cash prize for all the participants. I'm gonna break down all of the details and the information that you guys need to know so that you have the best picture and representation of how this tournament played out what the cards were or the hand each contestant was dealt based off of the stipulations of the tournament so on and so forth what was our strategy in the band pick phase did i make any mistakes on my run that i could have made better uh yeah i just you know me guys i'm, I'm quite thorough before i go any further though if you're here because I've already been informed yesterday on stream, I was informed that there's some drama occurring between two contestants in the tournament. If you're here thinking I'm going to comment on that, no, I'm not. I don't give a fuck. It's not my business. It's got nothing to do with me. I, I've told y'all already, I'm completely over the drama in the gotcha. Trying to keep up with every drama in the gotcha community is like trying to match my, my soon to be two year old daughter's energy. If I tried to match her energy, I'd have one foot in the grave and one foot in the ice bucket. All right. It's just not. <laughs> Grandpa Smack ain't got time for all that, guys. All right. Uh, so I ain't, got, I ain't got nothing to say about any of that. They can handle their own business. But I want to at least explain how the whole experience was for me. So before we do, let's go over all the details. I got some uh, I got some notes jotted down here so you guys can be informed. I'm sure you got some questions that you want answered, but let's go ahead and go over that. When did we know about the tournament? Answer 48 hours beforehand. We didn't hear about this tournament until 48 hours beforehand. Now, I, I don't know about the some of the other contestants because they were already invited before we joined. They could have very well got the same notification. I can only speak for me and the group that I've been in for the regular HSR tournaments, the Tamias Cup group, which is uh, for the past like four tournaments, it was the same people. It was me, uh, God, Dargos, EO, and Moon. These four contestants have always been in the Tamias Cup for the past like four tournaments, somewhere around there. Anyways, we all received the notification at the same exact time, which was 48 hours beforehand. Then we joined in on the private little uh, invitation from the sponsor, and then we ran into the other contestants. Now, when did we know who our teammate was? 36 hours before the tournament began. We got notification on who our tournament or our teammate was on um, September 4th at 11 p.m. by Brax. And the tournament began at at 3 p.m on september 6th so yeah you know not exactly 36 hours but pretty much one day and a half <clears throat> it was nighttime on september 4th and then it was the afternoon on september 6th that was when we knew it now before we go any further guys i just want y'all to know normally when we compete in these tournaments for the tamayas cup that is we have like three to four weeks to prepare for the tournament format to get to run through all the teams and then we as you do that you start to learn who's going to work the best who who's actually the strongest for that format because you're just sitting there banging your head against the fucking moc 12 until you figure out what works best <laughs> generally you have very ample time you got a lot of time to get that stuff figured out and you generally are going to prepare if you're wise three teams for both halves because depending on your teammate and their investment, you might want to pick up their half. And then you got to account for what if they ban these characters, then I got to have this budget team prepared for that scenario. It's a lot of preparation. It really is. Uh, so 36 hours is not a lot of time. Who knows what each contestant's schedule is looking like in their IRL life? What uh, obligations they have, sponsorship deadlines, maybe, I don't know, content getting ready to prepare for sp particular games. There's a lot of commitment that needs to be, you know, like committed to for a 36 hour notification of a tournament to begin. And this was an all day thing. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and continue on. What were the tourney rules? One team must have Silver Wolf. This was a literal prerequisite. You couldn't do anything. It was mandatory. Uh, now, one thing that's annoying about tournaments is I wish I was in charge of the rules. Because I tell you, if I was in charge of the rules, the tournaments, I'll be honest, this was interesting. This is a cool little fun rule, I guess, but not when a bag is on the line. But if I was in charge of these tournaments, I assure you they would be the most fair tournaments possible. Everybody would be sharing one fucking count, uh, account, and, and that account 
would have every single character possible with uh plenty of builds that you need to make your stuff work that way nobody can make the excuse of pay to win variables or any of this other stuff especially again when a bag is on the line but this was a condition and there was no getting around it the next one limited five stars can have up to three eidolons yeah no matter what at limited five star is so long as they don't have more than three eidolons it is fair game so if you're a budget player coming in here with e zeros and you're going up against a e3 robin e3 sparkle e3 young lee whatever tough luck <laughs> uh three standard five stars can have up to four eidolons if you have an e4 branya fair game if the other contestant has an e0 depart uh tough luck uh four signature light cones can have up to three soups so you can superimpose a, a signature light cone up three times and still utilize it number five no point system so when you look at these rules right here anybody with uh, a, a fucking brain can see that it is totally catered to a dolphin slash well and if you are going into this tournament as a budget friendly person such as god doggo such as myself such as zmm any of these three contestants are going to be at a disadvantage there's no sh there's no fucking question about that and again you are a moron if you don't agree with this this is just this is just a fact it's not even a, it's not even an opinion this is just a fact uh, so how many chances do you get to do a run? Did you guys get to practice as many times as you want? You know, uh, do you get to retry as much? No. The answer to this is you get one retry per team, not per uh, person on the team, per team period. And then the runs must be done live and on the spot. So you, it, they did it this, this uh, way to make the tournament as exciting and nerve wracking as possible, which I, I don't mind this at all. I thought that shit was awesome. Okay, how do you know who gets first pick in the band phase? Answer, we didn't know until the band pick phase started. <laughs> I, I shit you not, we saw the rule, it said it was a coin toss up. I thought we were gonna do the coin toss up at least an hour beforehand. No, I literally did not know I was, we were second pick until it was, we were second pick and it was time to do the shit then and there. So that was also like little time to prepare and had to figure out right on the spot as well. Now, me and God Doggos did run through some band pick face scenarios well before this happened because, you know, that's the smart thing to do. If we get first pick, then let's like run this. What if they choose this? We did do that for a little bit, but there's only so many like, scenarios you can run through. Now, what was the payout? All prizes below were split between teammates. That's important to know. All right. So if first place was 5,000 and you got first place, that means you got 2,500 and your partner got 2,500. Same exact conditions for every other place before that. Now, you'll notice right here, this is where I took a big problem. You'll notice right here that first place, second place, that it, dude, the difference in pay is monumental, okay? You get fourth place, you get $250 paycheck, even though the tournament took up a whole entire day and then another day in preparation, 48 hours of time commitment, you still get $250 for the participation and the time, right? Uh, it's, I don't mind the payouts. I mind the conditions that are attached to the payouts. Let me provide an example. If you're in the winner's bracket and you're going up against this other team and you do your run and your run is solid, you do everything perfect down to the T, bro. Like you just, you calculated that shit. It was chef's kiss. And you have nothing but E zeros on your team. And you lose against the other team because the other guy has two E2s of the most broken supports and a SIG on every single person. They get 5,000, y'all get 25. That wasn't a loss due to skill. That was a loss due to money. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. The, you know, if, if I, be, I don't think I'm being unreasonable. I don't even need to ask anybody that. I know for a fact I'm not being unreasonable and saying that's just that's just horrible. Uh, but that's what they were. You know, I won't I won't go any further on it. At the end of the day, you can just say no to the tournament if you want to. You did have that. You did have that option on the table too. Me personally, I love competing in these tournaments. Every single one of them is unfair every time. In terms of like a budget player versus a dolphin or well, there's never really any fairness. Uh, I play typically because it's fun. I like to compete and, and you know, it, it's just a good thing to do. Why not? Who cares? But um, let's go ahead and go over uh, the strategies of me and God Doggos during the band pick phase. And then I'll talk about uh, our runs versus our our um, opponents runs and then we'll wrap up the video okay so i'm not going to go through the entirety of the band pick phase it'll just take too dang long uh, i believe braxophone has the entire tournament not only on his twitch vibe but i think he might also have shared it on his youtube channel but if you want to go check that out you can go look at that that way we're just going to talk about the critical points of the band pick phase because i ultimately believe this is where we lost however 
you never really know how things can play out. It's a possibility that um, Rory might have had more pay to win options on the table. But from my assessment with my expertise and knowledge in this game, I think he would have been I think he would have been fucked if we would have done it the way I, I pitched to my teammate. Uh, that's not a blame, by the way. I think I'll we'll go over it in a bit. They got first pick. We got second pick. They banned Robin, which I thought was weird because generally I, I was anticipating us to ban Robin. I was anticipating them to ban like Ron May and then we were going to ban Ron May. But I, guess, I mean, Robin, but I guess it doesn't matter. Regardless of who bans what, we would have chose the same two people regardless. They first picked immediately choosing their two DPSs. Now, from my uh, expertise watching like esports, watching League of Legends, watching whatever, if the if the other team reveals their dps that early then you have to do the opposite of them and re and go for supports right if they reveal dps early you go for supports early period solidify the supports they solidified their dps the the weakness to revealing dps early is now you can take away the strengths of what makes a dps shine and thrive aka the supports they need to really pop off that's what you want to try and do on the defensive end with your bands and your picks Sometimes you pick somebody that not only shuts down the other team, but it also amplifies your own team in the process. Those are the most powerful picks. So I remember when we chose Ting Yun and Pella to start off with, uh, I, I remember people being like confused about that. And I, this is not me being pompous, arrogant or anything. I genuinely shot, thought to myself, these guys are amateurs. Why the fuck would they be surprised by a Ting Yun Pella pick when we've banned Ron May, we've banned Robin, these two chose their DPS. It's like, what the fuck? Why is anybody shocked by this? This is insane to me. <laughs> but that was my thoughts running through my head. So ban phase, the second ban, it's pretty important, right? This is generally where you will obtain information on what somebody's trying to do. It will narrow down the options that you have on the board to be more, a little bit more easier to discover. But our objective on this part is to not allow them to know what we're trying to run. Now, as I told you, we're all experts in this tournament. So their team likely knows the options we're trying to go for. They just don't know which option yet. So when we come to this part right here, our thought process is we can't reveal our game plan, which our game plan was we wanted to get Doggos the boot hill and we wanted to get me either Dr. Ratio or Yun Lee. Since they took away Yun Lee, then Dr. Ratio was the next pick. However, in their mind, I could also go Imbibitor Lune. I could also go uh, Blade. I could also go, actually, I've, uh, pretty much all there is. I might be missing somebody else. No, that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. So at this point, we ended up uh, closing out the Sparkle. Why did we close out the Sparkle? Well, because Sparkle could be used for zero cycle ammunition on a uh, Acheron comp. We don't know which one of them is running which. Sparkle could be used on a Yun Lee comp as well. So we just didn't want to, uh, to, to give them that option, period. But by doing the Sparkle ban, we kind of gave away that we probably weren't going to be running deal in their mind. So let's speed away a little bit further. Okay, so we banned Sparkle. Right here was a dagger to Doggos. Right here was an absolute dagger. Doggos' plan was to run Branya, Harmony MC, and Pella with a boot hill. No sustain on the second half. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, running boot hill without, without Ron May is a fool's errand. Doggos, according to Doggos, he almost got a zero cycle. One cycle was easily doable. He almost got a zero cycle. So that was the plan to get him that team. However, I want to be clear here. I kept telling Doggos, it is highly unlikely that you're going to be able to achieve every single one of those units. Those are all units that are, are quite desirable or quite bannable in the eyes of the other opponent. But since we didn't have much time to prepare for the tournament, Doggos didn't have a lot of time to prepare alternative options. It is what it is. You can't really fault the man for that after I gave you the context that we had 36 hours remaining. So he was banking on the Boot Hill comp to work. So with that said, the next 30 seconds goes by, holy moly, it took a while, and they end up banning Harmony MC. So that was a dagger to Doggos. At this particular point, it was a real big fat L on our team's behalf because now he has to resort to running Jing Liu, or he could have even ran the, the freaking, the little, the, I forget the guy, the little frost boy's name. You could have ran him, but he didn't have one invested in, and he didn't have time to build him up either. So he pretty much, the only option Doggos really had, if I'm being honest, was Jing Liu. He didn't really have another option. 
<laughs> from where I'm looking at. And he's not a whale. He, he's like very conservative with his uh, investments. So at this point, he had to pivot to Jing Liu. Now, though, we come back to our pick. This is where I think we lost the tournament. And I don't think Doggos is at fault. He merely thought it was going to play out one way. And I thought it was going to play out one way. Turned out I ended up being right, but he very well could have been uh, right as well. And I could have been wrong. Right here, I straight up told him, and this was my thought process. I said, we need to lock down Scooby-Doo right now, a.k.a. Hua Hua. Why? He just revealed his Young Lee very early. Young Lee's best team in the game is Ting Yun, Robin, Scooby-Doo, and herself. That's her best team in the game with a sustainer without a shadow of a doubt. Crazy energy recharge, crazy speed, crazy turn manipulation. We already banned, they already banned Robin. I already have Ting Yun. If we pick the Scooby-Doo, he is fucked with that Yun Lee on that second half. No doubt about it. Bro's, bro's run's gonna go from being smooth to scuffed. He's not, he doesn't have his Ting Yun, he doesn't have his Wahua, he doesn't have his Robin. At this particular point, that character, is, and he can't even choose Sparkle. Sparkle's banned. So in my mind, it was the most powerful play to make. It's gonna solidify my doctor ratio composition. I had already ran that composition off screen, got a one cycle, smooth as butter. And uh, now, granted, that was with his signature light comb. But I was like, yeah, we do this. That's a one cycle for me. That, and in the process, Young Lee gets scuffed. I bet that his run would have looked just like Doggo's run if you took away the Scooby-Doo. You can't run fucking in a Venturine on a Young Lee team because he's taking away the aggro of Young Lee. So now he's going to be getting hit, which is going to butcher her battery even further. You could do it, but it's going to be scuffed. But like, he's, what is he going to run? He's gonna run Topaz, Hanya, and he's not gonna do a sustain comp, a sustainless comp. That's just not gonna work out. This has to be more perfect. Would have been fucked, honestly. Would have been a grimy ass run. I, I think I, I call five, six, seven cycles, just like Doggos' run. Meanwhile, I would have got a one cycle, solidified that. Would have been smooth. Doggos insisted on solidifying the Branya early on because he said that if he couldn't get the Branya, his boot hill would be scuffed. He was he was afraid. So, uh, and it, honestly, I can't blame the guy. He had a Pella and, you know, if he doesn't get the Branya right now and they take away Branya, then he's he's really going to be like scratching his head on what he's going to do. And that that could have happened. So I told him, hey, you know what? That's fine, brother. If you're worried about the Branya, then fine. Go ahead and pick her up. But I'm telling you right now, if we don't solidify Scooby-Doo, they're going to pick her up. And he said he didn't think that was going to happen. But he also said, you know, if it happens smack, I'll give it to you and I'll say you're wrong. And then the next in the loser's bracket, you get to decide everything. He literally, he felt bad about it. <laughs> what ended up happening is we took the Branya for uh, Doggos and then they took uh, Scooby-Doo and Jow Show, solidifying very solid picks for their DPSs. See, the thing about me here where I was, and now I'm looking back on it in retrospect, Doggos' run was fucked the minute they banned uh, Harmony MC. So I think it would have made so much more sense, all the more reason to solidify the Scooby-Doo. Because even if they take your Branya, your run was fucked no matter how you spin it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you were one trick pony with the booty hill. I feel like his run was fucked no matter how you spin it. Uh, so it's funny when you look back on it. But dude, I'll be honest, I don't give a shit. I, I kept telling it to him. I said, doggos, who gives a fuck, man? We're here at the bare minimum. We're getting paid something for, for, for playing a video game. It ain't that deep, bro. He ended up feeling bad about it, but I kept telling it to him. You could have very well been right. And regardless of if we ended up playing it, who knows? Maybe the guy had some other well option. Maybe he had a fucking e E3 Jade on his account. And Jade Young Lee, he would have popped off with. Who We don't know how that would have played out. So this, though, was the, the, the definitive deciding factor for me. I think we had the best chance at winning and beating them if we would have got the Scooby-Doo. His run would have turned into, it would have been a bloodbath on both Doggo and his side. And then I would have beat, uh, what's the name, ZMM by two cycles. We, I think at bare minimum, even if his Young Lee somehow pulled out a fucking five cycle, we would have tied. Right. So I don't know. It, it, it's interesting right there. But that was how the band pick phase played out. But how did it look at the end? This was pretty much what we ended up uh, deciding on. I had. Oh, this was the final piece of information that's crucial. The reason I went Dr. Ratio, obviously, is one of the best stronger picks to to go on the first half. But also Doggo said he couldn't get a good run in with Silver Wolf. He pretty much like was he was telling me without telling me, can you please pick up the Silver Wolf? Because I can't. 
I can't get an efficient run with her with my boot hill, which was fair. And I said, well, hell, I'll just pick up Dr. Ratio. Silver Wolf's one of his best in slot anyway. Cool, I'll do that. That's that's fair game. So I ended up getting the Dr. Ratio comp just because of that. When I explain that to you, now that I look back on it, I almost ran my like plan perfectly. If I would have got Scooby-Doo, the very team I set out to acquire was either Dr. Ratio or Yun Lee with the exact team I just pitched uh, to you. Ting Yun, Silver Wolf, and Scooby-Doo. So I almost like literally ran the book the band and big face almost ran it perfectly i really did but it just didn't plan out because me and my teammate had a different point of view uh so that's what happened during the band and big face now during our runs there was a, a mistake i made that people were convinced we'll go ahead and head over here people were convinced that because i had a venturine on the far right hand side i butchered my energy funneling towards people of my choosing the cool thing about Aventurine with Japar's Light Cone is he has insanely high aggro. He's likely to get hit, but even then, RNG, sometimes they still don't target him. Uh, it's ridiculous. People were convinced I could have gotten a two cycle. Some people. I could have gotten a two cycle if my Aventurine was correctly placed. That's just them talking out of their ass and not knowing what they're talking about. The reality of the situation is I had ran that uh, team with a, a, a correctly placed Aventurine beforehand and even afterhand just to make sure maybe I could have saved myself a cycle. Still got three cycles. Matter of fact, not only did I get three cycles, I didn't even fucking come close to getting two cycles. Why? My uh, Dr. Ratio Sig was banned by the other team. So I had to run a free to play light cone on him because I didn't have any other options except sword play. Sword play was dog shit on, on Dr. Ratio. Why? Because bro doesn't tick a bunch of times. He only hits one time and then two times, right? So sword play is just, it's inefficient on him. So I had to go with the herd of store light cone significant dps loss my silver wolf is free to play she's e0 with uh a resolution shines as a pearl and aventurine ain't got no business being on this goddamn team if i'm being honest <laughs> he ain't nowhere near scooby-doo's value on this team scooby-doo giving an energy recharge to all three of these uh characters dr ratio silver wolf and ting yun way too fucking strong plus the attack percent boost so this team was quite literally a free to play team Three cycles is the best anybody's going to do with this investment, regardless of where you place your adventure rate. Go fucking give it a try. Do the exact same investment to me. Come to realize that three cycle is the best bet you got, brother. So I, I although I made a mistake by putting adventure rate on the far right, it wasn't a mistake that actually would have saved me a two cycle. Um, I didn't even come close. I ran it eight times today. Still didn't even come close. So, uh, you know, I made a little mistake, but it wasn't a mistake that was definitive. Case in point. Now, in terms of God Doggos' run, and uh, I think his name is Ruri, Ruri's run. This run here, uh, after he scuffed and then retried again, he got a two cycle clear. But Scooby Doo, given the battery, not only to Yun Lee, but also to Hanya, enabling Hanya to ult earlier, activate DDD earlier, at, uh, allowing uh, Topaz to pop her ult earlier. This piece was, um, you know, let me get my big head out the way. That was the deciding piece of Ruri's team. And I stand by that. If you took away that Scooby-Doo, I think it would have been a massive nerf to his team. And he would have been dealing with the Venturine shenanigans in the second half, just like God Doggos. Uh, overall, though, I think he played this team about as perfect as the team could be played the second way through. He also had a little bit of RNG where he hit the jackpot with fucking Hanya. And Hanya beat Aventurine's roll thing, got a full fucking free ult, which allowed him to solidify that two cycle. So, I mean, honestly, well played by him. But Scooby-Doo is the real MVP on that team. He had a signature light cone on his Yun Lee. He had a signature light cone on Hanya. It was um, Sparkle's signature light cone. And he had an E1-S1 Topaz. Really fucking fat buff for Yun Lee. The strongest buff on the team was the E1-S1 Topaz making his young Lee hit like a truck. So way more pay to win induced variables on that team when you go and look at somebody like God Doggos is his run. Again, a moron will think that I'm hating when in reality, I'm just telling the truth. God Doggos had a signature uh, E0 S1, um, uh, fuck, I forget her name, Jing Liu. And then he had, a, I think, an E1 Branya. And then he had a Pella and a Lorcha. Yeah, I mean, th dude, this team here is like a OG, like, I don't know, fucking what, 1.4 team? <laughs> this team is so outdated, it's insane. Uh, so I wasn't expecting God Doggos to do anything. He did as best as he could with the team that he had. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, at the end of the day, I think we lost that tournament purely off of the Scooby-Doo ban and a, a higher invested 
team in in comparison to the one that got doggo's hat that's my honest opinion without any malice any salt but at the end of the day you know ggs to the other contestants i think they ended up winning the entire tournament if i'm not mistaken uh ggs to them because what's crazy is we went i think we went up against the strongest team that rury guy is a hell of a player and we almost uh you know got him in the band pick phase which i was proud of uh is there anybody else i want to talk about oh zmm zmm actually had the same investment as me which is funny we ended up getting the same exact clear time zmm was a very free to play friendly team his akron had a sword play on his uh gallagher had a three star god tier uh light cone um cook on where it gives 12 energy to the entire party rory huge shout out to you i did not know that was a thing i didn't even know it existed because i don't care about three star light cones what a fucking cook that is three star light cone 12 energy to the entire team upon entering battle oh my god there's so many ways you could use that but it has to be on an abundance character and he's using it on gallagher fucking cook anyways zmm's team was same exact investment as my team so Three cycle, three cycle, Dr. Ratio, free to play versus free to play Acheron. I thought our, our shit was as fair as it could possibly get. He had a Jow show, which is awesome. And yeah, good, 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 good props on him. If you would have had signature light cone Acheron, though, he, he definitely would have got a two cycle clear. Uh, and I think that's all I want to comment on. Yeah, that's going to wrap up this video, you guys. Honestly, I didn't feel like making a whole two hour video actually watching every single play. Uh, our our runs weren't really that crazy in my mind it wasn't anything that i saw that blew my fucking socks off in our runs the crazy plays i saw were actually after us and the other teams and stuff where ruri did the uh the sparkle uh play with jing Liu. which again granted from my perspective even though i already knew about that little play it wasn't as impressive to me because it was an e2 sparkle and an e2 robin that's my personal bro e2 sparkle and robin on the same team i think anybody can zero cycle with those two on the same team at e2 that's not a fucking hate i'm just being honest bro that's you gotta understand that's a thousand fucking dollars of investment i would hope a thousand dollars of investment can get anybody a zero cycle if you're gonna hate on that well you know my, my content's not for you i'm too fucking real for you bro i'm just keeping a stack but it still was a cook i enjoyed it that's gonna wrap it up those are my thoughts on the tournament congratulations to the uh, contestants and whatever placements you guys had i had fun in it with the time i spent god doggos bro you still cook like a motherfucker off screen and all the uh the the content that you create on your channel uh peace love and happiness guys gonna wrap it up and i'll catch you on the flip side